Good to see you tonight. Are you glad you're here? Amen. About nine of you are. The rest, I don't know, the rest of you is even here tonight. It's good to have you. And uh, good to have the Williams family. And they're going to come up here and sing. And for those of y'all don't know, Connor's married. So all you girls, stay away from him. His, his wife is a ninth degree black belt in kung fu. So she's prepared for any, any six of you. There he is. Look at him. Five months still on honeymoon. This is Brianna. We're glad. I don't know how he got that girl down the aisle. I'll be honest with you. Uh, his dad said he drug her all the way down, so I don't know. I'm not real sure, but your dad told me this afternoon, he said, I started to tell him I was going to read Psalm 119 before he ever let you kiss her. <laughs> That's at the wedding ceremony. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm glad you're here tonight. Any uh, visiting pastors? I know we have a few. If you'd stand up, please. We'd like to recognize you. Visiting preachers? All right. Amen. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Let's start back here with Foster. Amen. Okay, Brother Lanny. Amen. <coughs> Brother Clay. Amen. I hope not. <laughs> All right. We've got some different churches here tonight. I just want to check and see if your church, if none of these preachers are from your church, you put your hand up. We'd like to recognize you as well. Okay. My goodness. Back here in the very back. Yes, ma'am. Good. Good to have you. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good, good to have you tonight. Yes, sir. You got a you got a uh, announcement to make. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, all right. Man, I tell you, food will bring preachers out. I, I'm telling you right now. I guarantee you every preacher will have Friday off this week and say, that's my day off this week. And they'll go out there and eat and pig out and be sick and everything else. All right, coming right on down. Yes, sir. Good to have you. Amen. Wonderful. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Good to have you, too. All right. Anybody else going across? Anybody else over here? Anybody want to confess? All right. Y'all must not like Keith very well, do you? I didn't think you did. This bunch is from Gospel Light, and they don't like their preacher. Just as good as it Right here. Amen. Miss Georgia, good to see you. Anybody else over here we haven't missed, we missed? All right. Good, then. You ready? Let's pray. Brother Clay, uh, bro, where's Brother Clay? Pray for us tonight, brother. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be able to gather tonight and to conduct the work of the church. We are so glad that you have been with us and have been ahead and not forgot us yet. Mm. Lord, we thank you that you lead us and guide us and speak to us and send those that know us and draw us near and make us feel we're not apart. We're, we're the chosen for the church that you want us to have to do the work that you need and not have to do. Mm. 
Yes. Amen. Amen. For those of you who don't know, don't get the email. Tree Dotson made it through her surgery without any problems. And uh, she's in a, in a regular room. But David said don't call or visit because she's still in a lot of pain from the surgery. And Miss Gwen's home tonight because she's sick. And I appreciate you praying for her too. Right, your turn. Amen. <coughs> Good evening. Please stand with me and turn to 211. Let's just praise the Lord. We'll sing through it twice. Let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts to heaven and pray. <laughs> Let's start again. page to 210. Oh, how he loves you and me. We'll just sing through it once. got two announcements tonight just a reminder next Tuesday night seven o'clock uh, Jerry Harris will be here with us uh, he'll be here to preach and then his family will also be here to sing so looking forward to that next Tuesday night and then uh, don't forget the, the little sheets you can grab that are in the vestibule uh, and you can put down uh, if you want copies of CDs for just one speaker for August or all the speakers just make sure you put down how many copies of each you like to have and if you need a mail to you make sure you write uh, you put your address down name and address and make sure you print as clearly as you can all right any other announcements all right y'all come sing a few for us I'm not gonna put a number on it you do whatever the Lord leads two three four ten whatever Faces out there. I think I'll just go with God. And if you go with Him, there will always be joy. There will always be peace. There may be battles, may be storms, but deep down in our hearts, we're glad that the Lord gives us something special there and peace and that joy. Let's sing that song. I think I'll just go with God.
next song has become one of our favorites on this travel and sung. It's entitled, He'll Do It Again. Uh, many times we live our life in the past, oh, it was always good way back when, but we forget that God is the same That's yesterday, right. today, That's and forever. Right. He will right. not change. Amen. And if he's done it once, he can do it again. That's right. Good, wasn't it? Yeah. They're going to come back and sing at least a, at least one more, maybe a couple more, three, four, however the Lord leads. Can I get uh, a couple of or some ushers come at this yeah. time? Brother Lanny, can I get you to bless the offering tonight? Yes. Yes. Amen. 
stopped at eight, so we get in home at eight o'clock. Y'all can stay in all night.
y'all enjoy that? Yeah. Sure, I'm going to tell you once that lights your fire, your water, and your wood's wet. Brother Brad, come on. These folks are down in, from North Carolina, and uh, he pastors a church down there. Where was one of the girls was missing tonight? Which one was missing? Was they Abigail all here? Tripp was there for a few weeks. Who? Abigail. Abigail. Yeah. I knew something was missing up yeah. here. <laughs> if y'all could have seen this dad's face when they were singing, you wouldn't believe it. Yeah. It's red now, but it ain't near as red as it was a few moments ago. He's a happy, he's a happy father, and he yes, loves sir. his family. Yes, Amen, sir. brother. Love you preach for us. Thank, glad thank you're here. You. Amen. What a blessing to be about. Amen. Amen. And uh, if uh, we're saved, uh, we ought to be uh happy about it and I tell you what I'm happy I'm not going to hell amen but I'm a whole lot more happy I'm going to heaven and I'm so happy that you're here and uh, we all just be happy 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 praise God amen uh, God's happy people and uh, I'd rather hang around happy folk wouldn't you and sad folk there's a time to cry but I tell you what uh, uh, it's hard to cry my be best two soul winners last year went home to be with the Lord and broke my heart and uh, but you know what? It, it, there are funerals, I, funeral services, and uh, I couldn't even shed a tear. I was so happy uh, that they went home to be with the Lord. I'm glad what we have in the Word of God, we can believe it, we can bank on it, uh, and we can be blessed by it. Amen. Uh, uh, for me to live is Christ. Every day you live, you ought to say, "I'm going to live for Christ," uh, and to die is gain. You say, "How are you going to gain anything?" Uh, you're going to gain a perfect peace and perfect rest and a perfect place in the perfect presence of God. And it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time. And uh, we just uh, thank the Lord, uh, our pastor, for inviting us to be here. I'm so sorry your wife couldn't be here. I so enjoy her fellowship and what a blessing she is. And uh, appreciate uh, uh, this church and your kindness. My children love to come up the road uh, headed this way to sing. And so we are thrilled and honored. If you have your Bibles, open them with me. And uh, what a joy it is to open the Word of God. Amen. I'm glad when I open my Bible, I don't have to wonder, is this the Word of God? You know, do I have the ancient manuscript? Can I tell you, you don't have to have the ancient manuscript. Uh, you've got the Holy Word of God. Amen. Uh, when I went to school, you'd open a carton of milk. And uh, before you did, I went to public school. And uh, if you call it uh, government school now, it went from public school to government school, amen. If you don't, hadn't got that one yet, you better be praying uh, uh, because uh, God uh, wants you to be educated in his word. But when I went to public school, uh, we always looked at our carton of milk to see the expiration date. But I'm glad this doesn't ever expire. It's always inspired, amen. I, I'm glad I've got it. It doesn't ever spoil. It doesn't ever go bad. Uh, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk uh, of the word of God that you may grow thereby, amen. Uh, and I appreciate the good word of God. Uh, John chapter number 9, uh, this evening, uh, again, we appreciate you being here. Uh, if you would and could, would you stand in reverence to the reading of the word of God? i tell you what. Uh, there's nothing that you have in this world eternal except the Word of God. As you hold in your hand, it is the only eternal possession you have. It is the Word of God, and thank God for it. Amen. Uh, and verse number 1 of John 9, uh, the Bible said, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents, that he was born blind. And Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay and said to him, And go wash in the pool of Siloam, uh, which is being interpret, uh, interpretation sent. Uh, and he went his way there for and washed and came seeing. Boy, didn't he come back different? You know, obedience always works 
obedience works. And the neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him that was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? And some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore, uh, therefore said they unto him, How are thine eyes opened? May we pray. Heavenly Father, we beg your help and your touch. God, we ask you, God, to please, uh, Lord, anoint us with fresh oil. We pray, God, Lord, that you give us unction to function and power to preach. Open hearts. God, do a great work for your name's sake. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word that uh, never returns void. We thank you for the preciousness of it and the power of it. And, Lord, how personal your word is. God, save us so and change a life. Lord, you know what every need is, and I'm so thankful. You know who's here. You know their address. You know their name. Lord, you know their need. And, God, we pray, God, you'd meet each and every need. And we'll thank you and we'll bless you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I want to preach on this thought, the must in work. You say the must in work. Well, in 1852, in London, an owner of a business saw that his employers were being overworked and production was low. And so... He saw that they were overworked and overregulated, uh, and uh, they were underbenefited, uh, and uh, they found that they needed to do something. Here is the amendments to their work schedule. Mind you, 1852. This firm has reduced the hours of work. The staff will now only have to be present between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m., on weekdays. A stove is provided for the benefit of the staff. It is recommended that each member of the staff bring four pounds of coal during the day during cold weather. There is no talking allowed during the business hours. Man, everybody be fired in America, amen. said, now that hours of the business have been drastically reduced, the partaking of food is allowed between 11.30 and noon, but work will not on any account cease. The owner recognizes his generosity in his new labor laws for you. <laughs> who's, who's looking for a job? Amen. <laughs> But as we look at this, I was interested. Christ said, I must work. As we look at the Word of God, the Bible says that Jesus as a child said, I must be about my Father's business. Jesus, as he preached, he said, men must repent, except you repent. You shall likewise perish. It was a must. You must be born again. But after you're born again, there is something, the must of work. Do you know a church that won't work is a church that will not live? Faith without works is what? It is dead. The Bible said, let us do the work of an evangelist. Do you, know, do you want to know how this track works? This gospel track uh, works uh, not by itself. It will not go by itself. And I didn't want it to spin because I didn't want it moving. Amen. Uh, but uh, this gospel track uh, will only work when the child of God puts his hand to it and goes to work for God. Jesus said in Matthew 4 and 19, he said, I will make you become fishers of men. Now if he saved us and he redeemed us and the work of redemption is a work of Christ, salvation belongeth unto the Lord. 
I'm glad that we know that whatever God does works. Uh, whatever God uh, thinks or whatever God says, God has never failed. Uh, uh, God has never faltered. Uh, everything God has done when he said, let there be light, the lights came on, thank God. Uh, uh, but I'm glad uh, uh, that it'll never be on his end that he's not at work. But this gospel track has no ability to work. Unless you put your hand to it and your feet to it and put it in the hand of somebody that's lost. They need a work of God in their life just like God worked in your life. Uh, but we're seeing so many today uh, that uh, don't want to work. Uh, but there's a problem here in this text. Uh, the Bible said, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man. You see, Jesus had perception beyond what his eyes could see. Jesus saw a blind man uh, before uh, uh, anybody else saw that blind man. Uh, he saw him before his mama was born. Uh, he saw him before his grandma was born. Aren't you glad we serve a sovereign God uh, uh, that his perception goes further back and further ahead uh, than we can ever understand? Uh, why? Because he knows everything. The Bible said he saw a man which was born blind. I got to thinking about that and I couldn't help but think about what was the work of God in this text? Jesus said, I must work the works of God while it is yet day when no man can work. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me. You say, how can a creator be so interested in one person? Aren't you glad he's interested in you? Tonight you might be thinking, boy, I hope God works in their heart. I hope God play, plows up their tater patch. I hope God will work in the area of fixing them up. But you know what? Tonight every one of us need a work of God in our lives. We need his touch. You know, tonight I've got a watch on, and I've had this watch for many years, and I really don't know where this watch came from. But what you don't know that I know, this watch hadn't worked in 18 years. <laughs> and we laugh. Now I'm going to get a little tight right here. This watch hadn't worked in 18 years, but what about you? Could it be your watch? That you hadn't been handing out gospel tracts. Uh, you hadn't been faithfully working at church, uh, praying for souls and praying for your pastor, praying for the church uh, uh, to grow and to go forward. Uh, uh, you see this watch. Uh, uh, it doesn't tell correct time. Uh, why? Because it doesn't work. Uh, you want to know what would help this watch uh, if it be returned to the watchmaker, uh, the one that put every piece together uh, to determine what's wrong with it and to fix it. There's two choices when something don't work. Either fix it or get a new one. The Bible said that we're not to be hearers only, but we're to be doers. My daddy raised me not to look. If this cane was a shovel, my daddy said to a uh, shovel was never meant to be leaned upon uh, unless it was going into the ground. Uh, uh, he said, don't lean on a shovel. Use a shovel. Uh, God has given us tools in life, uh, but we like to prop up on shovels. Uh, uh, we like to prop up on things uh, instead of use them uh, in a way. Uh, uh, you know what? There's a lot, of, I guarantee you'd be shocked. Uh, there's a lot of teenage boys that don't even know how to use a shovel. And we say, what's happening in America? Uh, you go out to a restaurant and there's uh, half the tables are open and you're wondering why it takes 45 minutes to get seated uh, and you finally say, I just wonder what the problem is. They say, we're understaffed. Uh, nobody will work. The Bible said a man that won't work can what? Boy, I make a man dig a hole. <laughs> Amen. 
take a man's groceries. He'll go to work. But just like this watch hadn't worked in 18 years, when's the last time you put your hands to the plow? And said, I'm going to work for God. No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. We need to put both hands to the plow and say, God, I'm all in. I'm all in with my heart. I'm all in with my hands. I'm all in. Amen. You know, this COVID has struck, and I hate to even mention it, but a lot of people just say, my mind ain't working right anymore. Got brain fog and my mind isn't working like it once. I tell you what, I'm glad my Bible said he's not giving us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If your mind isn't working right, go to God and say, you need to fix this. I need your help. You gave me this mind. I'm glad in the book of, Night, in the book of Nehemiah, the Bible said they had a mind of work. Boy, they didn't play around building them walls, did they, preacher? They went to work. And they, they, they just weren't, uh, well, they didn't have just a trial in one hand. They had a sword and a trial. Hey, they were ready to fight. They were ready to battle. They were ready to build. Uh, they were going after it. But now we like casual Christianity. What's going on? We like just cruise in, and then we cruise out. Pastor, appreciate you locking the door. You know, I got a lot to do. I need to get home and watch that stupid television. Am I telling it right? How's your mind working? Man, it's just how's your heart working? Is your heart, you remember when you first got saved? And man, you just had a heartbeat for God. How somebody could just mention Jesus and your heart would skip a beat and, and you, would, uh, you would begin to reflect on how good God's been in your life. Uh, here was a poor blind man. He was blind from birth. Uh, he was begging because he couldn't work uh, and Jesus passed by. You remember when he passed by your way and he went to work in your heart? Uh, he put you in the Holy Ghost conviction and God was working in your heart and you surrendered the white flag uh, and said, I want to be saved. And the work of salvation took place. After you got saved by the grace of God and God began to work in your heart, all of a sudden you would got a new burden you never had before. You want your buddies to get saved. You want your family to get saved. And all of a sudden you're doing some awkward work that you ain't never done before. Well, I need to talk to you about dying. And what you talking about dying? I don't want to talk about dying. Let's talk about going to hell. I sure don't want to talk about going to hell. But let's talk about, are you saved? People say, I'm saved. What does that mean? You know, there's a lot of times we use Bible words. People have no idea what you're talking about. Where we're at, we go soul winning, door knocking. Children don't know Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. I, they don't know the songs you learned in Bible school. I, I, friend, I, I, there's a generation out there that does not know God because there's a generation that quit working for God. We had Bible school, had a wonderful Bible school preacher. The older I get, the more I love it. had one little boy get saved, a boy named Landon. He had, had about 11 come, wanted to know more about salvation, but only one really in his heart wanted God to work. He wasn't playing no games. I believe he really got saved. At the end of Bible school, the unexpected happened. It amazes you have a busy week, and you say, man, I got through the week, and I just want to wrestle with it. All my family went home. We went home. My wife said, it sure seems a little stuffy in here it's a hundred about all week at Bible school and I went to the thermostat and it was 82 degrees in the house and everybody said the air conditioner isn't working isn't it amazing how when something brings such comfort to us when it quits working we'll go to all expense to make it work again But let, let me illustrate something. We'll pick up a phone. Uh 
uh oh, my phone isn't working. Some of you young people can tell this phone hadn't probably worked in, in a while. <laughs> my phone isn't working. The line of communication isn't working. Why is it not working? No power. Maybe it's disconnected. Maybe your life's got disconnected with the power source and the only thing that can put you to work. But as our air conditioner went out, I got my phone that did work. <laughs> I promise you that, amen. And I began to call men in the church and say, hey, I know you had a hard day at work. I know you worked at Bible school. My air's out. Preacher, we'll catch you in the morning. And we said, fine, that's fine. We went through the hot night and slept and had fans. And thank God. So I tell you what, I grew up with fans. It wasn't a big problem when you didn't know the comfort of air conditioning. <laughs> but I tell you what, all day long, I was on that phone. Brother, don't forget me. Don't forget me. Don't forget me. Don't forget me. <laughs> all day long, that young preacher boy out of our church does heating and air. He said, preacher, I was... He said, I was thinking about you, and I, I, I was wanting to diagnose it before I got there. And he said, I, I believe when I pulled up, he said, we'll have you up and running in 10 minutes. And sure enough, the capacitor had burned out. It got too hot. Isn't it amazing some people, when things break in the church, or relationships get strained and somebody gets too hot, they'll just say, I'm done for. And they'll get disconnected. And there'll be, there'll be a, a church that you once shouted in, a church you once served in, a, a church you used to, a, to be on fire. A, a now a, a people get hot-headed and just because they didn't get their way. Can I tell you, if everybody wanted a, a purple carpet, that'd be wonderful. But there's a, a, a 30 that want purple. There's 30 that want blue. A, a, there's 20 that want red. A, and there was about five that wanted... A, wanted a, a orange and thank God they didn't win isn't it amazing it, your team is not supposed to win you're not supposed to get your way God has a way and we're to get in line and say, I, I just want to see God work. How does God work? Well, look at the book of Acts. It worked pretty good. He said, Terry in Jerusalem, do you be endued with power? And they prayed. Aren't you glad? Prayer still works, praise God. I'm a product of prayer. As Connor sang tonight, how that somebody prayed for us. I'm glad I had a praying grandma and her prayers work. Listen to this, I found this. So what was the secret of George Mueller's power of God? He said he took much time to be alone with God in prayer and meditation and study the Bible. He said he would study the Bible on his knees for hours. He said, I lived in the spirit of prayer. I walked in prayer. I lied down and prayed. I, when I would rise up, I was praying. And he said, answers were always coming. He said and penned this tens of thousands of times. I have had prayers answered. How's your prayer life working? If you want it to work, the Bible said, He that regarded iniquity in his heart, God will not hear him. You're not going to have a prayer life if you don't have a pure life. And you're going to have to work hard to stay pure in this impure world. You say, Well, it's too hard. Oh, no, it isn't. You've just got to want it. Let me tell you that what happened to me years ago, probably 26 years ago. I was in my study, studying. I got up, went to the church kitchen, was pouring me a cup of coffee, and I heard a I heard old raggedy car come behind the church, and I thought that's odd, and and I, I didn't uh, I didn't go look, and I I heard it, and it pulled around and stopped right beside my pickup truck, and and the flash, I just you know you want to go you want to go investigate what's going on. Holy Ghost started working in my heart. I didn't hear a voice with my ears. I didn't hear an audible voice, but I heard that still small voice out in my spirit saying, pray, pray. And I said, Lord, I'm getting a cup of coffee. 
just got heavier and said, pray. And I hit my knees right there in that kitchen and started praying. Amen. And as I prayed, got through praying and the truck pulled off. And as it did, I walked back to my study. And when I looked out the window, my pickup window had been busted out. So I walked around there and I walked around and when I got to my truck, I looked and I, I had a rifle in the back seat and they had stole my rifle. I called the sheriff's department, they came and they said, Preacher, so glad I, that you didn't confront them that uh, somebody's on drugs and breaking in houses. I know without a shadow of a doubt if I would have not heeded to the spirit working in my heart, I'd have got killed with my own gun. My life could have been taken over a $90 SKS. Don't you wish you could buy an SKS for $90 now? Praise God. <laughs> but here's my point. When you let God work in your heart, He'll work in somebody else's heart. Turn to, turn to Acts chapter 8, and I'm going to hurry. Acts chapter 8. God was doing a work. And we're going to come back to John Nine and we'll close. You know the story in Acts chapter number 8. Philip was preaching. God was using him. A revival had broke out in Samaria. I believe that revival broke out. Why did it break out? Because Jesus said, I must needs go through Samaria. He had a work to do with a well and a woman's heart. And many because of her salvation. The Bible said many believed upon him. Is that the Bible? You say, God used a woman? You better believe it. Praise God. Many believe because of her what God did in her heart. To come meet a man told me all they ever did. Now Phillips preaching a revival right in the midst of that right revival in Acts chapter number 8. Uh, uh, the Bible tells us uh, uh, that uh, something happened. Bible tells us in verse twenty six. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south. That's a good direction to go, isn't it? Praise God. Amen. Thought I'd just throw that in. Under the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is the devil. Let me just say this about the devil. I'm sure glad our God can work in a dry place. I'm glad God can work in a difficult time. I'm glad that God can work when there is a great, a great difficulties in our life. When there is a discouragement, God can go to work. And the Bible said, here's what I want you to see. He left a great revival. He was out there all by himself. And couldn't you imagine he getting a little conversation with God and saying, no, God, I was doing a great work over here. God he had it going on. I was, I was preaching and people were getting right and saved. And I, I had a great work going on. And God said, no. I want you to go to the desert. A dry place. A difficult place. A desert place. But there's one man. I want to use you to do a work in his heart. White man went to a black man. There was no questions. There was no conversation of a color. Praise God. I'm glad that that God red, yellow, black, and white. Hallelujah. They're all precious in his sight. And Philip, a lover, his name means a lover of horses. I believe he was like a workhorse. I believe Philip said, I know what you did yonder, but I'm looking for my next, my next assignment. He said, God, I'm ready to go to work where there wouldn't be any pins or accolades or anybody to pat him on the back and say, boy, that was good preaching. He was walking in the desert. He could have done the sun parching him and looked up and said, God, I left that to come out here. Don't un never underestimate the work of God. 
We've got a mentality that's got to be large to be a work of God. Oh, no. I'd rather hear that whisper, one whisper from God, than 10,000 words scream from somebody that doesn't know God. Philip went and joined himself, that Ethiopian eunuch, and that Ethiopian eunuch, I was reading about God. I, aren't you glad the word still works? I, I'm glad the, I, uh, the prayer works. I'm glad the precious word of God works. I, I'm glad the power of God works. Uh, and I'm glad in this text uh, we see preaching still works. He straightway preached Jesus unto him. You see this Ethiopian ruler, he had many possessions and he had a position. But he had a problem. He was blind. He said, how can I understand what I read and such, uh, un, unless somebody guide me? Preacher, you got a German shepherd. A lot of times German shepherds are service dogs. We used to call them as a little boy. They were C&I dogs. That people that were blind would have a hold of a dog and that dog was trained to help that one that couldn't see and that dog would guide them. Uh, but you know, I, I, we don't have to depend upon a dog. I, I'm glad that we've got something greater than a dog. We've got a God in heaven I, I, that wants to open our eyes. In John chapter number 9, I, this boy was blind. And uh, why was he blind? You look at the scripture in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. The Bible said, In whom the God of this world hath blinded their minds, lest they believe. I, I, the glorious gospel. Of, uh, the uh, glorious gospel. And as you think about that, I, I look with me and I'm done. And turn to First Chapter Three. Ethiopian got saved in in Acts Chapter Eight. Let me show you something real quick. Young and sang too long. Amen. Took my preaching time. Is it eight o'clock yet? Ten after. Praise God. Let me just show this and I'll, I'll sit down. John chapter chapter 3 and verse 8. You know your Bibles. He that committeth sin is of the devil, and the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Have you ever seen the devil working any harder than the day we live right now? Oh, it's heartbreaking to see young people so confused, uh, so bewildered, not knowing uh, who to trust or which way to go. But as we look, we see that Jesus came into a blind man's life uh, and uh, he opened his eyes. Uh, and uh, they begin to question, who opened your eyes? How do you see? And he said, uh, this one thing I know, whereas I was blind, now I see. Uh, and Jesus opened his eyes. Uh, did not Jesus come to do the work of him that sent him? Uh, and uh, uh, Luke chapter before the Bible said that uh, they gave him the uh, Jesus took the word of God uh, and he stood up in the synagogue and he read uh, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me he hath anointed me to preach the gospel uh, and uh, the Bible said that he set the captive free uh, and the recovering of the sight to who? the blind Jesus is ready to work in your life if you'll just let him The greatest work you can do is the work of an evangelist. God doesn't work in an unbelieving heart. The Bible said he did not many mighty works because of their unbelief. He'll not work in your life when there's unconfessed sin. He'll not work in your life if there's unforgiveness. Uh, but if you will ask him to forgive you, he'll work a work of forgiveness. He'll work in your life and do a work. And friend, I'm glad that when you think about how God works, if He created heaven and earth in seven, uh, six days, and He said, I go to prepare a place for you, and He's been working on our mansion for a long time. I tell you what, God's got a work prepared for us here on earth, but when we get to heaven, we're going to see Him handiwork uh, in a way we've never seen it before. We know that all things what work together for good to them that love God. Uh, how do you love God if you do go to work? Because somebody needs you to be a real Christian. You know Mark Twain had a whole lot of talent. But you know he made fun of Christians 
because of so many hypocrites. When he penned on paper, you think about this. As he penned on paper, I've got a pen right here. But you know what? The pen won't write. It doesn't work. If God picks you up and tries to use your life to write on somebody else's life to make a mark, will your life work? Is your life going to make a mark for time and eternity? Because you were full of the Spirit of God and you wanted to live for God in such a way that God could do a work through your life. Let's stand our feet. Loud and eyes closed. Thank you for listening so much. Pastor, I apologize for preaching over you. Maybe you want to come and say, God, I want you to work in my life. I want you to save me. If you're lost, you need to be saved. If you're here tonight, maybe you hadn't been working. You've allowed the devil to work you over and you've gotten cold and indifferent. Maybe you need to come and let God do a work in your heart. Or maybe you're just thrilled that God has done a work in your heart. You just want to come and say, hallelujah. God, I'm glad you worked in my life. I'm glad prayer works. I'm glad preaching works. I'm glad the power of God still works. Uh, the precious scripture still works. But that Ethiopian, Philip, left. And when he left the Ethiopian, Ethiopian was praising God. I'm glad praising still works. Just praise him. Pastor, you come. I don't know, man, what a message. I don't know how God might have spoke to your heart tonight. There may be somebody here tonight that's never trusted Christ as their Savior. And uh, though this is a meeting to be an encouragement to all people, we want to encourage you, if you're not saved, to take a moment and come forward and let us take a Bible and show you how to know Jesus as your personal Savior. And maybe there's somebody here tonight that would raise their hand and say, Preacher, would you just pray for me? I've, I've never trusted Christ. I don't know uh, what Brother Brad was talking about, a place called heaven, and all these things that he was speaking about. Would you pray for me? And God bless you, young man. Amen. Somebody else? Yes, ma'am. God bless you. Somebody else? If God spoke to your heart, don't stop, Ms. Robin. <clears throat> Let the Holy Spirit keep working. These two people that raised their hand, I wonder if you just look at me for a moment. Nobody else is looking. I, I wonder if you'd come down here and let us take a Bible and show you how to be saved. Amen. Come on. Would you come? Okay. Will you talk to us afterwards? After the service? Amen. What about Christians tonight? God spoke to your heart about something? What about our faithfulness? Man, he talks about faithfulness. He, he drilled me tonight. If nobody else had been in here, he got me. Faithfulness in giving out gospel tracts. Faithfulness in telling others about the Lord Jesus. Faithfulness in sharing God's word with people when we have opportunity. I'm just thankful tonight that God saved me 53 years ago. I haven't been the best Christian, and I'm still not the best one. But I know God wants to use us, all of us, for his honor and his glory. Are you allowing the power of the Holy Spirit to control your life? Can I tell you something? You need it every day. You need the anointing of the Spirit of God every day of your life. Because of the, because of the hellish world that we live in, you need the Holy Ghost to protect you. 
We need to put on the armor of God. Let me ask you, how many of you get up in the morning and spend time in prayer and reading the Bible and then ask God, Lord, I want to put on the whole armor of God today. I need that. We need to do that every day. Maybe there's somebody else that wants to come. You come on and find your place down here. We just asked tonight, how many Christians would say, the message spoke to my heart, the Holy Spirit of God touched my life tonight. Would you pray for me? I wonder if you just slip your hands up all over this building. God bless your hearts. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. I want you to pray for this one. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but I want you to pray for this one that uh, raised their hand that they're not saved. And pray that before the night's over with, they'll come talk to one of us and we can take the Word of God and show them how to know this precious Savior, Jesus Christ, as their personal Savior and Lord. Just for a moment right now, I did this Sunday morning. I want you to just stop for a moment with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. And for about 30 seconds, lift this person up in prayer. Everybody in this building for 30 seconds, pray for this one that needs Christ. Brother Brad talked about prayer tonight and the power of it. Dear God, I ask you to help this person. Lord, may the prayers of God's children that are going up right now be answered for your honor and for your glory. Touch their life. Show them that without Jesus Christ, if they die tonight, they'll die and go to hell and they'll spend eternity in hell forever. And I know, Lord, you don't want that and we definitely don't want that. So I ask you once again, Father, as you, as we're praying and asking you right now, touch the heart. Bring conviction that only the blessed Holy Ghost can bring. For all those that have been praying, I say amen. Amen. We have others that are praying. We have one that's being dealt with right now, being salvation. And uh, I tell you, it's, this has been good. Amen. It's been good, brother. I tell you, what's the truth? <clears throat> I don't want to be an empty ink pen. I want to have a filler. And that filler is the Holy Spirit. My dad was a P, P, and P. A pen and pencil peddler all of his life. That's all he ever did. And he used to make me put pens, ink pens together. I hate ink pens. I use them today, but I hated them then because I put on the spring, put it in the filler, put the cap on, do this and do that. Go chica, 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 chica. That's a good one. You just do that. Can you think about doing that for eight hours a day? It would drive you nuts. Well, my dad worked uh, mentally retarded people in Chattanooga. Probably about 75 of them. He put them to work. He paid them. Paid them minimum wage. It was a long time ago. And they had people that sit there all day long and not do anything, put springs on an ink filler all day long. And they're moving like clockwork. Man, I've never seen hands move as fast. And they do all theirs, and they just keep pushing them over, pushing and pushing. Next person, put them in a barrel. And by the end of the table, they had an ink pen at work. They stack it in a box. They did all day long, eight hours a day. You want me to tell you what they did? They smiled the whole time. I used to like to go there and just watch them. I told my dad, I said, I fit right in here. I said, I believe I'd fit right in with all these people. I loved them. I'm just a teenager, but I love being around them. You want me to tell you something? I wish I had this sometimes. Lord, would give me this. Work it. Just stuffing tubes, whatever it is. I don't want to be dried out. I don't want to be dried up. I just want to keep serving Jesus. 
And I hope and pray to God you all do the same. Be in your churches tomorrow night. Not here unless you're working with kids. But uh, support your preachers. I'm going to tell you something. Every one of y'all have great men of God. And there's some here tonight as well. That serve you. Pray for them. And love them. And I know that's what the I know this is what Brother Brad would tell you as well. And Brother Dewey. And, and many of the other preachers that are here tonight. Just love your preacher. And I know you'll appreciate it. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the night. Dear God, what a blessing. What an encouragement. And Father, this is, this is the main reason I, I enjoy having these meetings. I enjoy seeing people get saved by the grace of God. Amen. That's just, a, that's just a icing on top of the cake. But Lord, the encouragement and the strengthening in our hearts <clears throat> and in our lives that are given to us by these men who come. Many times, Father, they ask me, say, what's the theme? I say, whatever God lays on your heart, that's the theme. You just help yourself. I just want them to take whatever the Lord wants them to give to us because I believe what was brought tonight was exactly what, whether anybody else needed or not, this preacher needed it. And so, God, throughout this week, may we just go back over some of the things we've heard tonight. May it be an encouragement to us when we walk into that store or we go through that drive through just to not be hesitant, but when we hand our money to pay, that we have a gospel track with our money to give to that person, whether in the store or in the drive through whatever it may be. And may we rejoice one day when we see souls that have been saved by the grace of God. Bless us tonight. Give us safety to our homes. And I, I pray that you bless Brother Brad and his family as they go back to North Carolina. Give them a safe trip. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. God bless you. I believe they have some CDs back there on the back. If one of you girls want to go back there, whoever's running, you run the table? Huh? Oh, oh, okay.